Hi, runners. It's Nancy from East Bank Club, and we have got an amazing treadmill workout for you. So let's make sure you're on the treadmill right now, and you can get started with a walk or an easy jog, and I'll tell you the plan. So it's a little bit of a hill workout today, and this workout is one of the workouts a former triathlon coach gave me. The first time I did it, I was a little overzealous and ran a little too fast and ended up feeling like I was gonna throw up. So today you'll probably be a little smarter than me, but I do think this is a really wonderful, hard, but great workout to work on hills on the treadmill. And if you have trouble with the treadmill like I do, I often find myself dreading the treadmill. This for me makes it go by so much faster and it is really, really tough. So by now, you should be walking or at a comfortable running pace. And we're gonna end up doing some running up a hill up to 10%. Right now, if you like running at zero, or if you're used to running on your treadmill at 1%, you can bring the incline to 1% right now. But in about three and a half minutes, we'll start rolling up that incline. In the meantime, I want you to come to your long run pace. So that could be your marathon goal pace. If you're not a marathon runner, maybe your half marathon or your 10K pace. If you're newer to running, you may consider adding a few walk breaks in this or coming to a fast walk pace. But for runners, I really want you to make the goal of finding that run pace and then taking that hand away from the speed button. So once you decide that that's your goal today, you are not gonna drop your speed. So I like to think if my marathon goal pace is around a nine minute mile, this is where I like to do the workout, but I've definitely done this workout slower, so go wherever you feel like you wanna try and do it. You're gonna need to hold 10% incline at this pace. By now, just think about your running form as you're rolling into that pace. It should feel pretty relaxed. Your foot should drop right underneath your hips. You're standing up nice and tall. I think sometimes on the treadmill, I run a little too close to the front, so make sure you've got room where you can drive that knee up and get that foot underneath you. The treadmill will give you feedback if you reach too far in front. And also, because you're on a treadmill and the tread moves, you don't have to do as much pulling of the ground back, but I really want you to think right now that you are hitting the ground with your foot and pulling the ground back, almost like you have cleats in mud and you're gonna kick the dirt off that cleat every time you push back. So by now you're settled into your running pace and you can dream about your marathon goal time or your 10K time and just kind of getting into a groove right now. One of the biggest errors I see with runners is simply posture. So make sure that you aren't tilted at your hips you're really standing up as tall as you can be. You should think about stepping over your ankle every time you take a step. So rather than reaching for the ground or kicking your leg out, you're actually stepping over your shin. That should help your foot drop right underneath your hip and help you pull the ground back. As well, for my slower speed runners, and I say slower speed because that just means we're not sprinting, you've got your arms out and they're serving as a counterbalance. When we get to that incline, you're actually gonna need those arms to help pump you up the hill. So in 40 seconds, we're gonna start and come up to an incline. The nice thing is we're gonna start at 2%. I never think it really hurts that much until you get to about six. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. If you're already at 1%, this first part won't be a big deal at all, but it just gives you a chance to feel like you're pulling the ground back. 
even with that 2% incline, make sure you don't tilt at your hip, you've got your chest up, and you're ready to go. So in 10 seconds, I want you to bring the incline up, and we're only gonna go to 2%. Ready? Three, two, one, 2% 2 incline. Get there, and start just feeling what a little bit of that incline feels like. It's not so bad here, is it? Being from Chicago, we don't have a ton of hills. So if you're going to do a hilly race somewhere, this would be a great workout for you. Hills, though, are also really good for strengthening our hips, that whole posterior chain, so our glutes, our hamstrings, calves. Which reminds me, as you start rolling up the hill, you may find that you want to put your midfoot down Maybe you're a heel striker, and I do think sometimes we get confused about where our foot should land. And I like to tell my athletes that what really matters is that the foot lands under your hip, not necessarily what part of your foot hits first. Because we're running at a longer distance pace, our whole foot's going to be on the ground for a period of time. So that means that as long as you're not staying on your toes or you're reaching for the ground in front of you, whatever part of your foot hits first, as long as it's under your hip, is just fine. So feel that. Your arms are probably still counterbalancing. In about 45 seconds, we're going to go up to 4%. In 30 seconds, we're going to hit that 4%. And I do think that's where I always start to feel like it's a hill. And sometimes, maybe even in Chicago, when you're going around, you go over what I'll call Montrose Mountain. Uh, sometimes you think, oh, that feels like a hill, but it's so short. And that probably, in reality, is maybe a 4% or 6% incline. Most of the time we go up things in Chicago, it's maybe... 2%. We're going to go to 4 in 3, 2, 1. Okay, here we go. 4%. Now you might want to start pushing those arms. As the incline goes up, make sure you stay up tall. Your hips stay underneath your shoulders. And we're keeping that cadence the same. So when we say there's a 90 RPM in cycling, in running it's exactly the same. That means about 180 foot strikes a minute, and as you're going uphill, that shouldn't change. So keep moving. Maybe your stride length changes a little bit, but you're going to keep hitting at the same duration you have the whole time. It's 4%, and we're getting there. You've got 75 more seconds here, and then the real fun happens. So make sure you're breathing. Make sure you feel like your arms are relaxed. Sometimes when we go uphill, I do this too. I bring my shoulders up because I'm trying to be, it's just hard and intense, so I shrug my shoulders. Let those shoulders relax and open your chest. Take as many deep breaths as you need to and keep chugging along on this 4%. You're going to feel like as the incline goes up, you've got to keep bringing that knee up. And that's great because when we're working a little bit of hill work, you're going to get that front side mechanic. So that means that that knee is going to come up and you're going to look a little more like a sprinter, which is always cool. In 20 seconds, we're going to go up to 6%. So get yourself ready. When I do this workout myself, I always think this is this is the place where I think to myself, why did I choose this workout today? Um, but I know you're going to do that. So if you think that, no, it's okay. In three, two, one, you're at 6% now. So this is where the temptation to bring the speed down starts. I know if you keep your foot strike underneath you, you keep 180 foot strikes each minute, and you pump with those arms, you can do it. By now, as far as heart rate and breathing goes, you're out of breath. I know. We're talking definitely yellow or red zone. And I know that that doesn't feel comfortable. Keep pushing those arms. Stay on that pace. We're going to do this together. Can you keep that chest open? 
fight all you can not to want to fold at that hip. That's often what happens when we run uphill because we're trying to decrease the load a little bit, but you're going to feel better and get more air if you stand up straight. You've got one more minute at 6%. If you're breathing heavy, you're doing it right. Keep on, pump those arms, stay on it, remind yourself that you can. It's gonna be two more tough minutes to the top and fight the desire now to touch that speed button. I know this is where you wanna think it's just one little bit, I'll go from six miles an hour to 5.9 and nobody will know. But you can do this. If you can do six, you could probably even go up. But six and 5.9, I can tell you they feel exactly the same. So stay on it with me. In 10 seconds, you're going up to eight. Now this is where the grit shows. Ready? Five seconds, four, three, two, one, bring it up to 8%. Stay on it. You got this. You're just going to really need these arms now. Now is when you want to think about pumping those arms. And if you need to know where they're going, they go chin to your pocket. So one arm drives to your chin, the other elbow pulls back to your pocket. You want to move forward and back simultaneously with your arm. So if your left arm goes to your chin, your right arm pulls to your pocket, and you're bringing that elbow back. Let those legs drive. You're going to bring that knee up. The treadmill will help put you back. So think about lifting those knees up and staying strong. Lift your chest up. Stay breathing. Stay relaxed. Shoulders relaxed. And keep pumping. I know this is the time when you start to doubt yourself. Or if you're me, I probably doubted myself about five minutes ago. You've got one more minute at 8%. Then you've got the last two minutes at 10%. I'm with you on this one. I've done this workout. I do this workout. I know it's not comfortable. And I know that you can do it today. Keep those arms moving. Keep that knee lifting up. Don't be afraid of breathing heavy. Don't be afraid of seeing that red zone. Maybe you're at 90% right now. That's okay. You're going to hit that for two more minutes, and I'm going to give you a break. In 25 seconds, the 10% comes. I know. Not comfortable. Maybe you can envision someplace cool that you're going at 10%. We don't have a lot of 10%s. There's a 10% in Boston, though. In 10 seconds, we're going to get there. So if you're dreaming of the Boston Marathon, here's your shot. You've got four, three, two, one, bring it to 10%. Now we've got two minutes here. So if you're thinking about that, it's maybe a quarter mile, maybe not even that far. You can envision that quarter mile, pump those arms, pull the ground back, let that knee pop up, Keep that chest up, keep your head up, and keep fighting. This is where champions are made in this next 90 seconds. This is where you are going to be your strongest. You're going to show everybody what you've got right now. It's only 80 seconds. Keep pushing. It will count down. I'll help you count down. Keep pushing those legs through. Keep those hips underneath your shoulders. Keep your feet underneath your hips. Pump those arms. Stay on it. You've got one minute, only one minute. And this is where I know it starts to feel a little desperate. Hang on with me. Keep driving. Keep pushing. 50 seconds. Arms a little bit more. If you're feeling so strong, maybe you can even take that speed. I'll let you hit that speed button to go up, not down. 40 seconds. You're going to drive. Drive to the top of this. You will be at the top in 35 seconds. Keep giving all you have. 30 seconds. Chest up. Arms pumping. Let that breath work for you. 
Yes, 20 seconds. You are on this. Now, leg speed picks up for the last 12 seconds. Keep pulling those legs up. 10, yep, you're on it. You've got seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bring it down to zero. Uh, so now, it's gonna take a second to get that treadmill back to zero, but that should feel good. You've earned your five minute recovery. If you are used to being on your treadmill at 1%, you can slowly bring it up there. But now I want to give you a chance to recover. If that took everything out of you, now is your chance to hit the speed button. So if you need a chance to step off to the side, to grab some water, to catch your breath, to shed a tear, you can do that right now. We're gonna go from the top down next time. And personally, I think it feels better to do it that way because you haven't been working the way up, so the 10% doesn't feel quite as bad. Um, but we're gonna start at the top of the hill and the hill's gonna get less steep as we go. So that's a great thing. Right now, as you're starting to get back into your running speed, I think it's a really good time to focus on being relaxed. You're not really climbing now, so those shoulders should relax. Arms go back to being a counterbalance. You can feel like you're stepping over your ankle again. It should feel comfortable again. Now that you've got about three and a half minutes until we go back up again, good reminder that we want to keep that RPM at 180. So if you want, We'll do a little test here too. And what we'll do is we'll count our foot strike for 30 seconds. And you're gonna count just one foot. So we'll see one foot's gonna go for 30 seconds. And we'll see if in that 30 seconds we can get about the right amount. So in 15 seconds we'll start counting. And I'll tell you what, you can count your right leg only hitting the ground. So we'll start counting in five seconds, four, three, two, one, start your count. Okay, that was 30 seconds. So, how many times did your right foot hit the ground? Ideally, we'd like to be about 45. So, that seems like it's pretty fast if you're not used to it. And if you find that you're very much underneath that, I think it would be a good time just to think about doing some work, maybe on the flats, where you're increasing that leg speed a little bit. Now, I've heard people tell me that that shortens their stride, and if you are overstriding, it should help that, but I don't want you to feel like you're taking the tiniest steps to get there. I just want you to feel like you're increasing how many steps you take, and your stride length stays the same, and if we're moving faster at the same stride length, we're only gonna be moving faster, so that's good. So right now, Again, you've got about 75 seconds to grab your water, to do whatever you need, because we're gonna work back up to 10% first. You've got a minute to get there, and then we're gonna come down for the rest of the workout. So if you need to shake out your upper body a little bit, you need to grab another drink of water. If you need to think about your foot strike, if you need to even Step off to the side to catch your breath for a second. Do it right now. When we have 30 seconds to go, I want you back on that speed. All right, we're 30 seconds to go until we get back to that 10% incline. Now going from zero to 10% means you're gonna have to count on those arms right 
away. 20 seconds, and I know it's going to take you a second to get to 10. So we are going to start adding your incline in three, two, one. Bring it up to 10%. 10% incline. Now, I know you may need to hold on for a second as you get there. As soon as you can, try and let those arms go and pump those arms. I do think it feels better like this because it's you haven't been going up the whole way. Pump those arms. Bring that knee up. Keep that fast cadence or steps per minute and that chest up. This is gonna feel better when you go down this time. 90 more seconds at 10%. Drive those legs, stay on it. Don't think it feels as bad as the last time. So it's a piece of cake. Make sure as you got to that big incline first, you didn't fold at your hip. You want to make sure that you are really upright. Legs are moving underneath you, but those hips are right under your shoulders. You've got one more minute to drive, then you're going down. That's the best part. Keep pushing for this last 55 seconds. Pump your arms, those legs driving. And remember, this is it. This is the 10% and the Boston Marathon, or I think some of the good ones, the Athens Marathon, some Big Sur, all those really great runs where you've got to keep running up that hill. This is why we're doing it. So 25 seconds. This is so you can be the person when there's a big climb, you're not the one who walks up it. You just keep driving, you keep pumping those legs, and you fight over that climb. So I know your heart rate now should be getting back up to where you're touching that red zone. In 10 seconds, we're going to bring it to 8%. So in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, you're at 8%, bring it down. Now, I know, unfortunately, 8% doesn't really feel that much better than 10%. <laughs> I wish it did, but it's not 10%. So now you can be confident that you're not going to touch that speed because we're going down from here. And as you get tired, this is your chance to check your posture. Core strong, arms pumping. Remember that chin to pocket? You're back there and you're breathing. Go ahead and breathe through your mouth. I know a lot of runners will say breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. When you're at capacity right here, you're gonna be breathing through your mouth and your nose. So do what you have to do to get that air in and out and keep that leg speed up. You've got 65 more seconds at eight, and then I swear this 6% feels quite a bit better. So. Keep pumping. It's really about 55 more seconds of pain, and then you're going to start to feel like you're on a cool down because you kind of are. So 45 seconds with me. Keep that chest up. Keep those arms pumping. Think about yourself pulling the ground back. You are the one moving the treadmill. You grab the tread and you pull it back. Get that foot up, grab the tread, pull it back. When you kick back, it's almost like you're pushing that dirt right off of your shoe. And when you go uphill, you've got to step over your shin to bring your knee up to get to the next part in the climb. You've got 10 more seconds. So arms pushing, five seconds, four, three, two, one. Let's go to 6%. Ah, probably not ah, but it's better than it was. So now you're thinking, okay, I'm going to make it. You can relax a little bit now. You've got six more minutes just to relax, and that should be good. I know you're going up a hill, but the hill gets less and less steep, and you're going home. From here, feel your body relax. Just let that leg lift up, hit the treadmill, and pull back. I often say that the best runners 
they look very relaxed. And that just means that you've got a lot of running efficiency when you're running. It doesn't look like it costs you a lot. And if you watch the best runners, maybe this year if you watch the Chicago Marathon and uh, being at the aid station many years, we could see the best runners, the elite world class go by and it looks effortless and they're running a 440 mile. And then you wait another hour and here comes all the people like me and it looks like it's so hard and they're running a 10 minute mile. So there is something to be said for running efficiency and there is something to be said for letting it look easy. It should feel relaxed even when it's hard because I can guarantee a 440 mile for 26 miles for them still isn't easy, but they've got so much running efficiency that it really does look easy. We wanna make sure that we have the proper leg strength, the proper cadence, the proper posture to make it cost as little as it can for us to run faster. Are you ready? It's time. In five seconds, you're going down to 4%. Three, two, one, four percent. Now, I'm hoping this is starting to feel a little bit like a cool down because we are going to use this as our cool down. So hopefully now four percent feels like you're on a flat, doesn't it? I'm always amazed when I do some work on the treadmill and then I get back on the ground off the treadmill. It almost feels like I'm going downhill, even though I'm not because all that effort to keep going up something has been really, really hard. I did a workout on the incline trainers in the back of the cardio room, going from five to 10%, and I stepped off and I almost fell over <laughs> because I wasn't used to the ground being so low. So now that's probably what that 4% feels like, and that is a good thing. Just think on the front end how 4% felt hard, and now it feels easy. So you've got one more minute here, and I always think that that's one of the best things about perception and sometimes how during a hard workout we have to reframe things when it's really, really hard. Think about how 4% felt in the beginning of this workout and now it feels easy. And maybe next time when you're going up a 4% climb, you'll remind yourself that actually it's easy. I think that we often have to do that and reframe things during the hard times during a workout because it, it helps us get through it. And it proves that we are capable of so much more than we think we are capable of. You've got only about 20 more seconds at this 4%, and you're probably a little bummed out that you have to go to 2%, because that's going to feel like you're going downhill. But that's good. Now, it's funny. I bet if you look at your heart rate, your heart rate has also recovered, because now you're running at your speed, but it's so much easier than that 4%. So in three, two. One, bring it to 2%. And right here, you're going to use this as your cool down. So your heart rate has probably come down a little bit, 2%, which is funny because I do in the Chicago Marathon, and you who have done the Chicago Marathon will know of Mount Roosevelt, which <laughs> is really not a very big uh, climb, but it feels like it is just a mountain and uh, it really is just perception because uh, when you go do some bigger climbs and you talk about Mount Roosevelt, I've heard so many people say it's the biggest climb. And then if you go for a walk in Grant Park and go up on Mount Roosevelt, you'll just have a good laugh because it really <laughs> is quite a small bridge. We're going to go for about 70 more seconds here. And you're going to hang into that 2%. And I want to say... I'm so happy that you made it. I really think this is one of the toughest workouts you can do running. And uh, I'm always impressed when I ask my athletes to do this workout because it really takes a lot of grit and dedication not to touch the speed button. And so you should be really proud of yourself if you made it without touching the speed button. And if you did touch the speed button, that's okay. You know why? Because Next time you do it, you're not going to touch the speed button. And maybe if you were overzealous like me 
and thought that I should run it at a really fast pace and learned your lesson, maybe next time <laughs> you'll be able to hit a reasonable pace and actually make the whole thing without stopping. So give me 15 more seconds at 2%, and then we'll slowly bring it down to zero, and you can bring this to a walking pace because you've made it through the workout and you did a really, really great job. So go ahead, bring it down. If you decide you'd like to run longer, feel free to. If this was all you had today, congratulations. I'm really impressed. And take a look at your distance. See how far you went on this workout. And the next time, see if you can beat it. Maybe you can go at, instead of six miles an hour, you can at 6.1 or 6.3. I'm just so happy you made it through this workout with me. I'll see you next time.